Hi there, this is Victoria Bowler, and today we are talking about how to edit videos for elementary general music. In the last video, we looked at some of the considerations that we need to walk through when it's time to make videos for elementary general music. We talked about how to set up the space, we talked about lights, we talked about sound, we talked about some general tips for overall stage presence, essentially, for making videos for elementary music. And now, today we get to talk about how to actually edit the video now that we've filmed it. Today we'll zoom through a lot of things, so I will add the timestamps here, that way you can jump around and find things that you need to. We'll talk about why you might decide not to edit your videos at all. We'll talk about how to troubleshoot some common frustrations with video editing. We'll talk about how to get the video on your computer, how to choose a software, how to splice and edit your video, and then how to export the video. So let's talk about what you can expect when it comes to editing video. I believe that happiness is not avoiding problems. Happiness is getting to choose the problems you want to have. And when we choose to edit videos, there are some implicit problems that are going to arrive when we sit down at the computer. So for example, you won't have enough space on your hard drive. Your program is going to crash. Your computer is going to freeze. And in all likelihood, this will take at least twice as long to edit as you are expecting. Those are the problems that are inevitably associated with editing video. And if you, those do not sound like fun to you, I would encourage you to find a way to not edit your videos. Because it is entirely likely that you don't need to edit your videos at all. Know that if you film a video on your phone camera and upload it as it is, you have done enough. An edited video is not what makes you a good teacher. Knowing your students and planning curriculum that meets their needs and implementing it in a way that is joyful and musical, those are the things that make you a good teacher. You are more important than your tech skills. Now, if jumping into tech is something that you think would be fun and you want to learn how to get better at it, then let's jump in and we'll walk through it step by step together. So let's go through some tips for editing. When it's time to edit videos, there are a few things we can do to help the process go a little bit smoother. Video has a terrible tendency to bog down your computer and make the process really painful. So let's go back and address some of the problems that we talked about earlier in the video. So first, you don't have enough space on your hard drive. This one is pretty straightforward. Um, just go through your computer, delete any big files or applications that you don't need. For example, old video projects. Once you've deleted them, empty your trash and restart your computer. Next, your program is going to crash and freeze. To help with this, make sure that you have exited out of all of your applications and programs. And then while you're at it, go ahead and turn off your Wi-Fi because that will let your computer have less information going on in the background so that it can focus all of its attention on your editing software. And then last, this is an obvious but tragically overlooked tip, um, which is just to save your work often. Control S is your friend. Next. Video editing takes a lot of time. This problem is hard to avoid. Stop and consider that you have regular lesson planning to do no matter what form that lesson takes. So consider how much time you spend planning and then think about the actual time it takes to implement the lesson. And then now we're going to tack on all of this time that it takes to edit. So however long it took to film the video itself, it's going to take at least that long to edit because that's the length of the footage that you have to go through. So if you filmed a 30 minute lesson before you even start editing, know that at the very least, this project is going to take an extra 30 minutes. And that is especially true if you want to add any text or graphics. So my top tips here for minimizing the amount of time you have in editing is to number one, plan ahead. If you know the picture of your end product before you turn on the camera, that makes the whole entire process go smoothly. We know about this already because as educators, we use backwards design when we are planning our curriculum. It's the same thing here. If you have a clear goal of what you want the end video to look like, that will make the filming process and the editing process go so much quicker. 
the next thing is kind of a tough one to hear, but is just to lower your expectations. Um, Beth Philemon, who runs Choir Baton, put it uh, like this. She said, you did not learn how to be a choir director in one day. You will not learn how to be a virtual choir director in one day. The idea here is that this is a skill that we get to practice, just like anything else that we talk to our students about, right? And so this is an opportunity for us to practice a new skill set. It's not fair to expect a beautiful end product the very first time. Think about the first time you picked up your clarinet. It didn't come out very lovely the very first time. It takes practice and skill over time. Okay, so let's get the video off of your phone and onto a program. In the last video, we talked about how to set things up for elementary general music. So now, let's say that you have a video ready to rock. The first thing that we need to do is get it off of your phone and onto your computer. And for this, I recommend Google Drive. When your video is done, click the share arrow and look for the Google Drive icon. Then pick your preferred Google account, choose where you want it to live in your drive, and then upload by clicking the blue button at the top right hand side. You'll wait for it to take forever to upload to Google Drive, and if your phone is plugged in, that will help make it so your battery doesn't stop the process here. So now we have a video uploaded to Drive. When you look at the video on your computer, you're going to click the download icon at the top right hand side, and then we're ready to edit. The next thing to talk about is an editing software. What are we actually going to use? There are lots of editing softwares out there. For the purposes of this video, I'm looking for something free and something that can be used on both Mac and PC. So out of iMovie and Premiere and Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve, the only software that meets both those criteria is DaVinci Resolve. We'll walk through that program today, but if you already have a software that you love using, I say keep using it. There's no need to change things that are working for you. And this basic process is going to be the same no matter what editing software we're using. So I will link to the Resolve website so you can download it on your own. Okay, let's edit. My goal today is to take video from the last video I did, and it is one big clip. I want to cut it so that I'm only using about 10 seconds in the middle. So let's jump in. When we launch DaVinci Resolve, the first thing that comes up is this project manager. These are all of the projects, like your most recent projects. We are going to go down to the button on the left-hand side and click new project. And we'll give it a name right now. Let's call it, I love apple tree. So now when I click enter, it's taken us to the main editing page. This is where you get to feel like a professional because look at all these fancy things we get to do. Today, we are only going to look at this editing tab at the bottom. And then if you go all the way over to the rocket ship, that is the delivery tab. So we are just going to move between editing and exporting. The first thing we need to do is actually get the video into Resolve. When we bring it in here, we can either put it in the media pool that's right here on the left. Right now, you can see there's nothing in it, or we can drag it straight to the timeline. This area in the middle is gonna be our main workstation. So wherever you downloaded that file from Google Drive, we can drag it into the media pool or directly in the timeline. Notice that when I drag it straight into the timeline, it automatically puts it up in the media pool. That way we have it if we ever want to use it again for this project. Now, right away, Resolve wants to tell me that my frame rate in the video might not be talking to my editing software. And do I wanna make a change so that they do? The answer is yes, we're gonna make that change. When it's time to actually edit, there are a handful of things that we are going to want to know how to do. This is basic editing. You don't need to know anything else to do a project like this. Here is everything that you will need to edit videos for elementary general music. We're gonna to need to know how to select the clips we want to work with. We're gonna to need to know how to play and pause the timeline. We will want to know how to zoom 
out and zoom in. And then where the magic really is, is that we're gonna want to know how to cut up our timeline and then how to delete anything we don't want. This is everything that we're going to use today. Actually, one more that's always useful is Command Z to undo anything you just did. Before we edit, we want to make sure that the video itself is the right size and it's in the right position. You can see here, um, I think I had my camera on lock at the very beginning. And so it has imported here wonky and that is an easy fix. I want to rotate the clip so it's not portrait, it's landscape. So that is super easy over here on the right hand side. I have all of these options. We want to use rotation angle. You can absolutely use this tool to scale it back and forth. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, for me, I always just go negative 90. And so now it's landscape, it's correct, but it's a little bit too small. So let's see if we can make it bigger. That way we don't have this ugly black box around it. My top option here is zoom. I can hover over that number. And if I click down and just move my mouse backwards and forwards, I can make this image bigger or smaller. So I want to make it just fit the screen up here. Okay, so we're good there. Now let's use command minus to make this project smaller. That way we can see the whole thing. My audio is pretty low and you can really tell like in the last half of this video, these mountain tops right here, like the mountain with the snow covered peaks, that is where the microphone clipped. So in this case, that's when I was adjusting the tripod, um, adding like the microphone, things like that. Um, the rest of it where I'm actually speaking, we can see that that volume is pretty low. So if I wanna change that, again, super easy. Do you see this horizontal line? Let me zoom in just a little bit. You see this horizontal line that's running along the audio? I can drag that up or drag it down to change the audio level of the entire project. So if it's something like this, where you realize that you were pretty quiet the whole time, or maybe you had instruments playing in one specific part of the video and they are too loud, that is a super easy way to adjust the timeline. So now we're set there. Um, I know off the top of my head where I was singing Apple Tree because that's what I want to do. I just wanna pull that section of Apple Tree from this past video. So let me grab some earbuds. Um, off the top of my head, I know the apple tree was somewhere around here. I'm gonna go Command Plus to zoom in. And I can see from the audio levels that I started singing right here. When we sing, we naturally just have more resonance than our speaking voice. And so I can tell that this is me singing so we can double check that. Apple tree, apple tree. Yep. So I start singing right here. I can zoom in even more to make sure that it starts exactly where I want it to. And now we get to splice this clip. So we have two options here. You can press B, that is blade. And that lets me um, cut anywhere in the video that my cursor is. I'm gonna do Control Z, Command Z to undo that. What I normally do instead is the razor tool that is command B. If I do command B, that will automatically cut my video wherever that marker is. So if I move the marker over here and command B, it cuts it right there. So you have two options. Normally I use command B. You can do whatever works for you. Um, I just wanna point out really quickly that you can also navigate, here's the blade tool at this menu section up here, and then you can go to the selection tool um, on the left-hand side. So those options are available to you if you don't wanna use the keyboard shortcuts. So now I have this section on the left that I don't want, I have this section on the right that I do want. I'm going to, um, if I am back at my blade tool, I am going to click A, to go to my selection tool and I will click the clip that I want to get rid of and I'm gonna go shift delete. Now, if I zoom out, I can see that's where my project starts now. I got rid of everything else that came before it. So now I want to clip the other side. I can see just from the project visually that the song ends right here. You can see where I stopped singing. So I'm gonna go ahead and control B that 
and I can double check. I'm gonna back up just a little bit to make sure that I'm cutting it in the place that sounds good. Out. Next, I'm going to, I did control B there, make sure that my selection tool is selected. I'll know because I can see it in red over here on this side or I can press A on my keyboard. So I'm gonna select that clip that I don't want anymore and delete it. So that's it. We can watch this back just to make sure that everything is set, ready to rock how we want apple it. Tree, apple tree, will your apples fall on me? I won't cry and I won't shout if your apples knock me out. That's it. Uh, that's all I need to do for this. Now we're gonna go to deliver and this is gonna end up on YouTube, so I'll click on YouTube. We get to give it the name I love apple tree and then we can choose where it's going to show up on our computer so where do you want to save it where will you find it i like to have a separate folder just for videos so this is the file destination for me this is the folder that i'm going to save it in so click save and um, all of these settings should be ready to rock because we clicked that this is going to end up on youtube so now let's double check that the project is going to spit out everything that we want it to on the timeline. See this horizontal gray line? That is everything that the program is going to render, is going to export. So we are set there because I see that the gray line starts at the very beginning of the project and it ends at the very end. If I did not want it to end there, like if I wanted it to end in the middle of the project, I could just export this much. Um, that would be a silly thing to do for our purposes. So now we are set. I'm gonna say add to render queue. That means that it is um, in the queue ready to rock and I will click <laughs> start render. And that is it, we are all set. Okay, there it is. That is everything that you need to know about how to edit videos for elementary general music. Now, some people also want to add graphics and text to their video. So that is what we will talk about next time. If you have any questions about this video editing process, I am not a tech person, I am a music teacher, but I'm here to help you out any way I can. So you can drop a comment below or you can find me on Instagram. I am at Victoria Bowler. Thank you so much for watching and happy teaching.